we met in a bar called the Marina. I didn't really speak to her at the bar. I just seen her and I just, I went over to try to shoot my shot, I guess. I remember us dancing one time and he asked me if the guy I came with was my boyfriend and if it was, then why? <laughs> why, why did I come here with him? <laughs> and it, it took him a good three months to try and finally get me to reply to every message he has sent me. I went to her house, we hung out, we chilled over there, we played cornhole, stuff like that. And then I thought it wasn't going any further, we we're just gonna text and talk. But then I ended up meeting them. Just really one thing led to another and, and I asked her to be my old lady. And she said yes, surprisingly. And we ended up starting a relationship from there out. The way she puts up with me, the way she takes care of our daughter, she's done a lot for me. And I, I told her that before that it shows how strong she is and I, I respect the hell out of her for that, for sure. It was a drunken night, and I said it first. Uh, actually, I think I, I think I did, if I'm not mistaken. And then he didn't say it back, so I was kind of wondering <laughs> until the next day. And then he finally said, "I love you first. Actually, I know I did. I remember whenever I said it. I remember thinking in my head that she wasn't gonna say it back and she was gonna leave me. He said, "I love you" after a day after I said it. We were sitting there, and I just remember telling her that I loved her, and it was, and I, I kind of cried then. It was kind of a Kind of an embarrassing thing, but. I know this one time we went fishing on a levee that we lived by. And no guy had ever brought me fishing before. I actually had planned to propose to her in Tennessee on a, on a trip. We went fishing, me, him, and our dog. Then I was like, you know, this guy's bringing me fishing. <laughs> I'm gonna marry this guy. Like, who brings me fishing? But I went off and I forgot the ring. So I was like, Shit, I gotta wait till I get back home. So as soon as I got back home though, and that's when I proposed to her, I knew I knew if she was gonna birth my child, that's the one I want. Dear Corey, today is the day we become one. This is the day we have both been so anxious for. I couldn't imagine anyone else being such a perfect cousin to me. You are truly my soulmate, and I couldn't imagine doing life without you by my side. I am so blessed in so many ways to have you as my husband and the father of our child. I can't wait to meet you at the altar. Even on the best ones, I will fight for you. Love is kind. Love is not proud or rude. Love does not envy or boast. And love always trusts and hopes. Love never fails. Dearly beloved, we're assembled here in the presence of God and his company of loved ones and friends to join this man and this woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. Now this is a sacred union and as such, should not be entered into hastily or without consideration, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, and in the fear of our Heavenly Father. Now if anyone here knows any just cause why this marriage should not be performed, let them speak now or forever hold their peace. <laughs> we're yeah, we're good. Upon hearing this, do you, Corey, take Raven to be your wedded wife? Do you, Raven, take Corey to be your wedded husband, promising to adhere and offer to him in all life's changes, promising to keep, cherish, and to defend her, and to be her faithful and true husband? and to be his loving and true wife until death divides you? I do. I do. I, Corey, take thee, Raven, to be my wedded wife. I, Raven, take thee, Corey, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold in this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poor. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. To death and his heart. Until death do, our, do us part, boy. <laughs> and now, for as much as Corey and Raven have promised to be faithful and true to each other, and have witnessed the same before God and this company by the giving and receiving rings and pledge, they hereby enter into a new estate. And as a retired judge for the state of Louisiana, 
I hereby pronounce them husband and wife, and what God has joined together, let no man put asunder, you may kiss your bride. I present to y'all this thing is this toy rashad. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you today as we come before you. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for the family and friends that are in attendance here. Their very attendance shows their love for this couple. There's much love here today. And Father, it's our prayer for this couple, all the good things you send their way, that they remember to give you all the honor and all the glory and praise. And Father, when hard times come upon them, and we know there will be some, that they come back to this time, this place, this moment, the love that they have for each other, and to seek you and all of those things in Jesus' name, amen. My husband and Corey are best friends. I've known Corey since high school. He was even our roommate for a hot second. <laughs> to see him grow from the man that he was into the friend, father, and now husband that he has become is nothing short of an honor. I've uh, watched you grow up your whole life, um, but watching you these past couple years with you and Raven and Brooke, it's really been impressive. And uh, I know that y'all's future is gonna be beautiful. It has been a pleasure to watch you two grow together and be a part of your special day. May your marriage draw you closer as you share your hopes and dreams. May your faith and love sustain no matter what you face. May you prosper in health and happiness. And most importantly, Corey, may you always remember that marriage is the one relationship where one person is right and the other is the husband. I'm proud of you, Raven and Corey. I, I'm proud of you, the man you became. and. Uh, for all the good friends we have, and I guess the most important thing I'm proud of is, is the granddaughter that you brought, because Brooke is so beautiful, and like I said, I'll, I'll watch a video of her every morning just to get me going. You see, Raven and I have a different kind of friendship. We haven't been friends for years, but you would never know that. I never had the measure, the pleasure of meeting your mom, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that she would be so proud of the woman that you are, because I know I am. So with that being said, everyone, one last toast to the new Mr. and Mrs. Rashel. <laughs> Dear Raven, I want you to know I love you so much. You have stuck beside me through all the hard times, and I love how patient you are, and I love how kind you are, and God, you're so beautiful. <laughs> I can't get over how, how beautiful you are. And then our daughter, she's such an amazing kid. Like, she is so beautiful. I, I, I watched you go through all of that, and then here you are, still fighting. I wish I could have met your mother, and I wish I could have shook her hand or gave her a hug, and, Tell her how great and amazing her daughter is. I pray to God about you all the time. Every time I'm gone, either if I'm working on the road or if I'm just going to a store, or even if you're going to a store, that nothing happens to you. And I talk to God every day about you and bro, that he takes me before he ever takes either one of you because I couldn't do this life without neither one of you. It's honestly the best and the most honorable feeling that I get to marry you. I'm always gonna be here for you, no matter what. I love you.